Hey, Ron Preston. How's everybody feeling tonight? Fantastic, wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic. I'm, um, I'm fantastic. I'm more than fantastic. Hey, this is a late night pod. Got the boys together. Uh, still first getting one. everything together as we start our episodes. Just it's the first late night in. podcast. Yeah, and we drinking uh, it's a celebration. Grand Cormino. Uh, shout out to Kevin Hart. Philly Zone, Kevin Hart. Oh, man, you could drink it straight. You could drink it with ice. Uh, my girl like to make little drinks with it. Um, it's a uh, <laughs> like no, <laughs> this is my first time having it. Bro. <laughs> no, this is my first time having it. Yeah. No, nah, it's it definitely got, official. It, you right. Hey yo, um, we got a um, we got a special guest in here. Um, we got uh, chiseled by God. God chiseled him. I guess that's what that means. Uh, everybody else was born. He was chiseled. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to question. Know what he, were you chiseled out of? Yeah, that's exactly what I was wondering. Gold. Chiseled uh, out of gold. Yeah. Doubt but, it. Yeah, because you you ain't you ain't worth shit. Honestly, I think. Right. Right. I like that. So, by the name, we're uh, under the impression that you're a godly man. You're what? Black Adam. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Okay. All right. Uh, but uh, by the way, um. We also are smoking out of a uh, orange today. I, I thought we were smoking out of grapefruit. It was the first one was a grapefruit, um, great mix. But uh, yeah, so we smoking out of orange. Uh, we got oranges in the bottom. We just it's just a, a certain kind of vibe. Uh, I was trying to go for tonight, something different, something I ain't never even tried before. But it's hitting. Y'all are on the late show. Oh my God, pull it through. Yeah, it's now, I don't smoke weed, so like, for me, this is the weed. This is my weed smoking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Get me buzzed with a little Grand Carmino. Uh, Jones doesn't have ice at his house, so please explain to the people why you don't have ice. Now listen, I don't got ice because I'm just not a fan of it. You know. So you never like beverages cold? No, I love beverages cold. You're like a, a room temperature ice. guy. I don't like no. I cold love, drinks make your teeth. No, hurt. I like cold drinks. Brushes with scented done. Oh, we just got a new follower on Twitch. Shout out to the Twitch. Y'all got to join now. I'm about to go live. Is it beer? The smoke is red, but I guess it's the light. I think it's the light. Yeah, it's I feel like I'm lights. smoking oranges, so it's like a little it's different. It's a blood orange vibe. Yeah. So how you guys doing today, man? How was your day? I'm doing really good, man. Uh, started, like I was telling y'all a little earlier, started the day with a lot of my new mantra is discipline, and I'm trying to carry that over into the new year. So, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. So, so I'm trying to... with your discipline journey, right? So what right. are you being more disciplined on that you haven't in the past? So I think it starts with like what I said with the quote, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. So I'm going to try and, you know, give my 100% to every task throughout the day, whether it's you know, eating right, getting the work in, um, spending time on the pod, you know, focusing right, right, on the right. business, things like that, and just carrying a whole new level and attitude because you got to prepare yourself for what's to come. So if you lazy right now, you're going to be lazy when you got a lot of work to do. So right. just that starting early and trying to trying to lock in before the new year. Also creating it, like you said, just creating that the schedule, yeah. routine, that schedule. And that's probably the hardest thing for me out right now. Uh, Jones has a flexible schedule. I would say it's flexible, but it's still very difficult to keep up with because I spread myself paper thin. And one Makes wrong sense. turn <laughs> could fuck up an entire week sometimes. Uh, also, this is the Culture Cartel Club. Absolutely. This is episode 004, oh, 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 005, my bad. Yeah, 005, oh, five. Oh, oh, five. Um, we will be dropping... Well, damn, we're probably going to drop two and then three right after it because I'm just ready for you guys to see us on video. Right. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of content dropping over the holiday weekend just because we have Absolutely. some stuff in the tuck. And, you know, you guys are going to be around the family, have a lot of time. So we hope you tap in, hope you listen and uh, right. enjoy the content. And tell a friend and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell mm. a friend. Damn right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like the great 2 chains once said. Join the Romy cartel. Jones? Absolutely. We're going to have a lot of exclusive content coming out soon. We're definitely going to have membership tiers opening up. 
merch coming soon everything y'all looking for you know be on the lookout for some master classes too i got some ideas and uh we're gonna start deep diving into this business world i got some things to talk about in the trucking industry facts we've been doing i got you know we're gonna deep dive into entrepreneurship soon but as for now you know tune in we're gonna keep everything rolling and we are back All right, all right. Short intermission. What's going on? We had a short intermission, but we are back. Uh, welcome back. We had a little audio problem, but Culture Cartel kinks, Club. man. You guys getting it all from here, man. We're not like sugarcoating anything. We just had a little um, battery problem, but we're back. Uh, so yeah, I don't know where we're at, but uh, oh, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was talking about how we are both. All three of us are entrepreneurs. We've all all had our hands in a few different fields, and I was asking, you know. What was your start into like your entrepreneurial journey? What was the first thing you started? You know, I'm, I'm hustling, you know, I'm getting this uh, without a job type thing for you. Uh, for me, first thing I woke up and pretty much tried to hustle as a grown man. I was selling shirts at one point. I was selling these why I hate shirts that everybody used to like. Got and it was fun. Time. It was I was my heart was never into selling shirts. It's just something I bought and people were like, I'll buy one from you. And I was like, all right, I just went and bought five and then they got ten to twenty and thirty and and I kinda stopped because the guy that was making my shirts, he like started acting weird or stopped doing it or whatever. And um took a while after that, but then I picked up the camera stuff and uh, how many shirts do you think you sold? All together, I probably sold about like 30, 40 shirts, but they, like, even when I stopped, people were still asking me for these shirts. They were like, yo, where the white shirts? Are you going to take it? Like, I still, to the day, people tell me, I remember you yeah. selling the white shirts, so they were, it was fun. It was a fun experience. I learned a lot about just uh, marketing and how to get people to wear it. Uh, one of the things I learned from marketing is when you're selling anything, you got to get somebody that people look up to or like to wear it first. Yeah. Everybody knows that. That's why I you know, big companies market rappers and actors and things, but that's the number one thing. If you don't have connections, people you know, are have, people a lot are of times people influence. don't care about the art. Yeah, yeah. So the art has to be recognized by artists or someone that's of importance, right? Like, so yeah, that's what that's what was my first thing. You and, want you, you want know. to know? It's funny for me because the first thing that I said I just jumped out and did was I had a pet service business. A lot of people don't know this. I was like walking. No, I know that. I remember washing. that. Yeah, I had a fucking minivan that my dad um, had. It was this white fucking minivan. It didn't even run. It was like all fucked up. It wasn't even put together. I remember I put it together in the summertime. Then I took it to the shop. Then I got it all fixed. I remember I kept breaking down. I was picking girls up in a minivan. I was like Wallow 267. I was driving a Mazda minivan. And I used to have all these dogs. <laughs> Wallow, space. really? Yeah. He was Look, a wallow. I had all Shout these dogs wallow. in the back, uh, but it was it was booming. I was booming for a summer, but at the, and, and then I remember uh, the first thing I did that set me apart, that made it easy for me, is I got all my flyers and everything right, and I went to like a, a building like in Northern Northern Liberties, like a big apartment building, right, and I literally like waited until somebody opened the door. And then I slid in, and then I just went from the top floor, and I just slid my flyers under everybody's door because I knew it was a pet friendly, very uh, illegal. Yeah, but I don't give a fuck. We gotta, I gotta survive. I gotta get business. Very illegal. So, um, <laughs> so I knew they. It's, this was a pet friendly uh, apartment building, right? So I just real quick all every floor. Was this in Center Fucking, City you were doing? You this said Northern Liberties. Northern Liberties. Northern Liberties. Okay. Yeah, and then literally. A oh, I think I seen one of your flyers. You probably did. I don't know. They were looking for you. Here you go. <laughs> no, listen. So, what's, so what's, some listen. guys put out flyers. And listen. He was kidnapping dogs, not trying to Whoa. walk them. <laughs> Whoa. No. Look, it was a dog napper at that time. I was Peter, we don't want no What smoke. year was this? Look, was this 2013? No, this was like 2015. Yeah, I don't know. 14, so, 15. So I got a question. So what was yeah. like, was that just something that was easily scalable for you and you thought you could very, you know, market it? Like pretty quickly, it or was, was it something? It that, don't take it as a dog guy. So it was, was it for no, the money, or what? Because you no, love dogs, bro. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm a vet. I'm a certified vet tech. I was giving dogs. Didn't you used shots. to work at a vet? Yes, yeah. in, in Cinnamons in New Jersey, VIP yeah, right, pet right. care. Yeah. So I used to want to be a vet, but how then does I, Tyler knew this, and I don't. I, I don't know, man. I used to wear scrubs to work every yeah, you day. You gotta watch bro. out for it. the guy. Guy's name Tyler. You gotta watch out for, man. <laughs> 
This guy, he's like Norwar. What's the name? Norwar. Norwar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember in 2007 you were uh, <laughs> yeah. Kidnapped. No, I, was, what? I, was I was living a whole nother, I was living a whole another life for like a, like a good year, it, but I realized it was a dirty job. And I didn't like I didn't like coming home dirty from like animals like right, a lot of pet dander and, yeah, yeah. And it stinks and it's like uh, I, you know I what's funny not. about that time so you were heavy into thong flip-flops whoa this dude is crazy wow. never keep it in <laughs> come on no never. you was on your hollister wave no no yeah, i okay. worked at, that yeah, was my no, first job <laughs> what did you have that to wear that was my first job you had, had to wear what oh, you we had to wear that's why i quit though <laughs> Like I didn't stay. <laughs> like, how is that a requirement though? That's crazy. <laughs> like you had long flip flops. Long flip flops. So wait, were you just like one of the people Bro, who stood at the front of the? I was a cashier. Oh, I was a cashier. At they said you couldn't wear closed toe shoes, and I had to shave my face. Oh, oh no, man. you know I know a guy, mm-hmm. huh? He's crazy. Yo, I know a guy, right? That's a grown man. Back then, back then, I of course I didn't have what I have now, but I still had like little shit. And I'm like, what? They made me shave my whole face, bro. And then I had to wear flip flops. That shit lasted two days, and then I quit. Mm. I never like imagine like coming into. I work. went to training though. Training was a whole week. I didn't have to have all of that shit. Right. And we got so paid for training. Yeah. Training was like two weeks or some shit. They never said and, it in training. No, they did. But it oh, was like right. when you go on the floor officially. No, but look, they're like, hey, you have I this got two the training weeks to get check, right. and then I got two days. And then I quit, and then I found another job. But another, the, my second job I had after that was lit. That was my first job, though. Huh? For two days. I shaved my face and went to work for two days, and I said, I can't do this shit. Let's be honest. They were pretty I something stayed else in the house there. and let my shit grow back. <laughs> Shave face and thong flip-flops. They it's were going crazy. for something else. No, you know, it's funny, though. Because imagine coming in there without I getting that I'm, memo. And look, bro, look, your first day. But, bro, now And the manager think, pulls you in the back room no, and is like, uh. But, but no, bro. Now where's your thong think, flip-flops <laughs> No, but look, now that I think back and yeah. I see how old I was, like, I was a boy for even being able to get that job. And I was a cashier, bro. I can't imagine, like, going to the, imagine going to the mall now, going to the house to buy, like, your little brother a gift or something, and you see, like, a fucking 15, 16-year-old dude, your cashier. That don't, you're not even going to. You yeah, know what's like, funny, though? Because a lot of those jobs, you be, like, everything is ran by kids. Like, you go in the mall now. Real shit. It's real? like no adults. If you go in, like, Louis Vuitton, you might, you'll get the adults. The oldest yeah, person been. is the manager. Yeah, it's the if weirdest that. shit. Like Sometimes they even because no, yeah, no, nobody wants to work in retail these days. It oh my sucks. god, I fucking it just sucks. quit. Thing. Yeah, it it's the worst thing in the world. I'm soulless, a soulless enterprise for real. No, but look, the fucking dog shit. That was like my shit for a while. But I love dogs, but I can't work with them. That's why I was like, yeah. See, to work I'm not like a huge dog person. Yeah, I love dogs. Like you have to be my dog. Like I, I've been places where people were like, I don't love other. Oh, my pit bull dogs. doesn't bite, not. and it's like looking at me like. No, I don't. Yeah, I'm not, I don't know you, so I will bite. I don't know. I'm the, not that type I don't know of dog. My owner person. just told you, I'm not that type of dog person. That's a weirdo. So you basically got into the uh, the walking the dogs and whatever for just yeah. because of and, your love of animals. Yeah, and I met this dude named Andrew, and he had a pet. He had two, like one or two locations, and now he's like monopolized that shit. He's got like five in the city. He's like killing it. He mm. watches like the Eagles players' dogs, and he boards. Shout out to stuff. Andrew, man. Andrew's like pack. Yeah, shout out to Andrew's pack. He gave me like. One of my first person gave me my little start in my game with that. But I took that. I was doing that for a summer. Then I just quit. And I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this no more. But I did get the money, and I moved into my first apartment. That's when I had that big-ass mm. place, that loft um, down right. Temple. I moved there. That was a nice spot. At the end of the summer, I had enough money saved. I moved there, and I wound up working at the hotel. And then I, and then I started getting into that. That was a whole other lane I started moving into. So uh, how about you? Sir Tyler, um, so Sir Jin- I guess I really kind of got my 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 most entrepreneurial start was probably with like painting and uh, small repairs and stuff like that. You guys were hustling the paint stuff. Oh, wow. definitely for what? Are, what a few were you painting? Years. Houses, oh, shutters, really? out you know, outside, inside, interior, yeah. exterior, um, actual houses. I know the old <laughs> Italian word for I paint houses mean you kill people. <laughs> oh yeah, it does. So he was actually out here painting people's right. actual houses. Yeah, he yeah. wasn't just no. Sure, 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 it was he wasn't sure, a hitman guy. Sherwin sure Williams was not a hitman. It was a, yeah. We actually did uh, did shop at Sherwin Williams a lot. Had an account there. Um, mm. It's a good hustle, you know. It's, you can Shout make, out no, Sherwin Williams. I know a guy that I personally know that made a lot of money from painting. Like, and you'd be surprised. Everybody think you got to go and be like all these other things. Like, it's painters getting these contracts to paint these houses, <laughs> getting like. 
10 grand a house. Oh my gosh. I Pain mean, is it's a hard craft too. It's not easy. It's not easy on your I, body, I, not your hands. Oh, definitely not easy on the body. But in terms of like doing the actual job, it's pretty easy. I mean, pretty Technology's much Technology's made it a little better with the spray guns now and stuff like I've never that. gotten into the spray guns. I don't they're, think they're, they're a lot better now. Though. Though. Now yeah. they're like Sponge. crazy. No, they're, no, they're, they're good though. Now. I know, I know yeah, a lot of people they, that do them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could probably paint the an exterior really, really quick mm-hmm. with the with the spray gun. You know, yeah. tape off Facts. the windows and things like that. You get because I remember mm-hmm. I, we painted it with brush and roller, yep. man. Oh mm-hmm. my gosh, that, I, that, that was that's forever. still I think the main <clears throat> thing people use. So is it really as boring as they say watching paint dry? <sighs> So, yeah, that's kind of why I got out of it was. Well, one, wanted to come back in like two hours. And so I, w- I, I tag teamed up and uh, partnered with my, my guy Whoa, Brody. What, and uh, What kind of tag team you and Brody was doing? Okay. Whoa. Um, Pause. Yeah, no, me and Brody was business partners, and uh, we used to do some some painting. And I was the cut-in guy, so, you know, I'm doing all the, all the intricate, you know, cut-ins at the ceiling mm-hmm. and, the, and the door jams and things like that. And, bro, oh, man, my hand just arthritically you know crypt up and oh, i can't yeah. even move my hand for From two hours oh my gosh listen my day. father-in-law he uh his hand he had to get like needles in his hands did oh, you say your father father-in-law oh my father okay um he had to get needles in his hands and because you know he's been doing it so long it's, it's crazy yeah it's a lot oh, of yeah, it's, it's a lot and of that goes to tell body. people like when you're hiring these paint guys like they're giving their bodies to do this, and they have to do it everywhere. Pretty much all like construction. The longevity stuff we put on our bodies. Honestly, I mean, the pain we put on our bodies, man. That's why I got out of the other industry, the uh, junk removal and demolition stuff. Well, I'm that's not brutal. out of it, of course, but it's brutal. That like sucks. I was doing it for like a year and a half, and like I was feeling it, bro. Oh, I did that right I, before I, I broke I, my shoulder. I really just was like, you know what? Like I just need a break. Like I can't. Like and the cause would always be coming in, but it's like. Bro, like some of these places like that I've been to, if I showed you in my phone, oh my God, it'd be like a nah, crazy. Nah, 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 nah. Crazy. I don't like like those type of jobs. I used to work for two men in a truck. See, the best thing is I was working for myself, so I'm getting a big check. But it's like Nah, I'm talking about the work. I used to yeah, work for two work. men in trucks it's, and we used to crazy. move people out of their houses. Yes. Yeah. It don't oh, matter yeah, from yeah. small to big. And we would get these people, oh my, I mean, the Bad stuff these people work. would take, and you would never think these yep. things are that heavy. Sometimes you'd be looking at it like, how did they even get this in? Yeah. That's the worst <laughs> shit. Yeah. You're looking at it like, yep. you're trying to take it Fuck. out, you're like, yep. how to get, and it's on the third floor, Bro, second floor. Bro, I had to take like, out like a whole China hell? cabinet from some old lady's apartment. I don't even know how she got it Let in Let me guess, there. she left the China in there? She said, they, she said they, oh, they put it together inside. I said, what? I'm not, listen, we drugged. We used to, they used to make us like break certain things down, but some things couldn't be break down yeah. and you just had to I like, mean, yeah. like we used to, I remember, I never forget this time. We moved this uh, house. It was like a condo, but it was like the downstairs condo and they did not have an elevator. And uh, we had to move everything from down there upstairs. When I tell you, I couldn't walk the next day because my, it felt <laughs> like needles were poking at my calf muscles. From that job. And ever since then, I called out and I eventually I just stopped answering the phone. When you're like, where are you at? Fuck that. That yeah, is not even worth that's, it. That's, I don't I don't want the same calf muscles as Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not it's into some that. some intense labor. And I know Tyler with wants those calf muscles, bro. Already got them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> already got them. <laughs> Bro, I, I guarantee my calf muscles are over yours. Never. We're not, we're not going into that. Whoa, whoa, Should we put whoa, it on the whoa, pod? Whoa, Yo, people whoa. are getting fake calf muscles what in Hollywood. Are those, what are those socks? Oh, okay. First of all, we ain't going to do that. It's my kid's what are, socks. What do you mean your kids? I got my uh, daughter on my socks when she was a baby, That's man. That's your These daughter? Is, this is classic, man. You, she really? don't look like it now. That was when she was fresh out. Bro. No okay. hair. She looked like my son right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, man. So I got I got the kids. I'm repping the kids today. Mm-hmm. You man, know how that goes. That's what fathers get. We got to fix the father <laughs> gifts. <laughs> This is a good gift, Merry Christmas. but it's not many things you could buy a father for Father's Day. Honestly, I just be wanting rest. Just leave me the hell alone. Yeah, I can dig that. Maybe like a day me, to yourself, may, just peace, now if, if you can leave me the hell alone and get me if it's a game on or something, I go to the Sixers game or Eagles game or something if it falls on the right day. But leave me that alone. Like that. That's 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 best. You know, just let me do me that day. I like that too, man. Like my thing is this though, like. Fathers, we gotta find a like for fathers, you gotta for ladies if you're watching this, right? Well wow, as a father, peace and quiet is definitely a thing. Like just let, just give me a couple dollars and be like, yo, go hang out with your guys. Mm-hmm. Like after we do something with the kids, 
Let's go hang out with the guys. You know, go to a game, like he said. We don't want to do nothing. Let's go out to eat, maybe. But, like, it, it, you know, it's not really much we want, though. Like, a lot of times, you just want to chill. You're right. Like, I can't even think of something I would want to do. We always so busy doing shit on that it's day. Very it's cool creatures. to sleep in. Yeah. Make sure it's breakfast ready for me when I wake up, and that's all. Just... Oh, you're a breakfast in bed type of guy. Yeah, that is nice. That's I don't nice. really. I'm not a fan of breakfast. Yeah, I don't like bed. eating in bed. Like I, I like, I like breakfast. I'm like a guy. Like if I'm at a hotel, I'll call oh, yeah, them that's, that's a, I, the night before. Like this is what my breakfast order is. Can you have it here by eight, like eight, nine o'clock or something? Whatever I expect to wake up. I want my breakfast in my room. Like literally, y'all could just push On the time, car, yeah. push the cart in there. Even if I'm still asleep, I'm probably gonna wake up soon. Just push it in there. Leave it, you know. Leave leave all the trays in, closed up. Never did that at a hotel. Order some. Uh, oh no, see, breakfast room it's because like I've I worked because I've worked in a hotel for so long. I know how to stay at a hotel. Yeah, you. There's a lot of shit you, you can die in there. There's a lot of shit you can ask for that people don't ask for. It. Right. So it's and it's a put lot us of on, put us it's, on. It's, oh, oof. He turn said, Ooh. turn down service. It was the um, it was what was the vibe? What was the vibe? Listen, some of these sweets, I know how to you know you say certain things. Get, you can get certain upgrades that you guys might not know of, but uh, room service, all types of stuff. You know, getting you know when you're at a hotel, you got to understand like when you go to like now, of course, when you had like the fucking days in. I'm not talking about that, but if you're at anything more than like a three to four diamonds property. You can get like some shit, man. Like fucking all types. I feel of like things. all the hotel food is always the same. See, you not you not Eggs, staying at the right hotel, man. Bacon, potatoes. What's the? Then most, they do the little bit of fruit. What's the most? They give you the little what's, waffle maker. What's yeah, the, oh man, the waffle maker. That's what's like the best, what, with the button. You dispenser. know what's funny? I spent so much time in kid and as a kid in hotels where that was like Real the no, but thing, like the what's, funnest thing to make. What's the, like the best you hotel to, like, you feel like you stayed at? Huh? What was like the best hotel you stayed at? Like probably the best, the most expensive hotel you've ever stayed at. The most expensive hotel I stayed at. That's a good one. I think my mom took us as kids. Well, I know my mom. I got footage and all, so I know it happened. But we were in this nice ass hotel in like L.A. It's like this was back in the day. In my mind, it's probably smaller than what it was. But this was like the biggest fucking hotel. It was like as soon as you got, he's like. I think it was like 15 floors inside, 20 floors. And as soon as you come out, you could see all the way downstairs. And they had the water floor fall in there. It was just, that was a nice hotel. But I, other than that, is Vegas had a, has a, I love Vegas vibe. Yeah, Vegas has mm -hmm. some Like, really Vegas nice has hotels. the best hotels. Like, you go downstairs, you're in the mix. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you got, so around, like, yeah. you know, I like the MGM. And then I was at the, um, the, um, the okay, one across when the street you was by there. Ocean. What was the, what was the one in, uh, Ocean's Eleven that they were, this, um, what was the hotel? The Ocean's Borgata. I, it might have been the Borgata, whatever it was, but that's actually a real that's hotel. In Atlantic there. City. Oh, well, not the Borgata then. But it, what was the joint called in Ocean's, Ocean's Eleven? Whatever. The huh? Bellagio. The Bellagio. That joint's nice. Yeah, it is. That joint is like, I, <laughs> listen, I watch, I've been to Vegas two times in my life. Yeah. And... The second time I was there, I went to Bellagio. I'm like, yo, this joint. Like I said, somebody's it's probably like, oh, that joint's ass. I don't know lot, the hotels out there, but that was shit, a nice there's hotel. There's a lot of shit you can ask for. You can ask for your pillows fluffed at a certain time. Y'all yeah, don't do that. So I'm I'm just I'm trying to get the game. Tell me how I get the upgrades. What do I have to say? What is what is the proper technique? We're we going we to we no updates. We're going to vlog. <laughs> uh, we going to vlog. I'm going to oh, This I'm is gonna an exclusive. I'm going to get a real nice situation for us and i'm gonna walk you through the ropes. welcome to jones hotel yeah. upgrades no, master i'm gonna show class. you how to stay at a soup i'm gonna show you how to stay how to how to really get your stay on man you gotta stay right uh, so get we're shooting a lot for that even when you book your reservation there's certain things you could put in there to make it fancy like yo i ain't gonna lie traveling and going places from the even from the plane I've learned so many hacks to get ahead of things oh fuck yeah it's so many hacks like me as a videographer someone told me no matter what seat you have, if you like as a videographer, I know how to get on the plane before everybody else. One of the things we usually say is, hey, I got expensive camera gear. It's very expensive. I would appreciate if I can get on the plane before everybody else. And it doesn't most ninety percent of the time they say yes. And you can get on the plane before everybody else. Put your gear up. You don't have to worry about, you know. Rashad isn't in the shot. It all gotta move the camera back. 
somebody's telling us uh, how we should. Do. Well, uh, for you guys that's on Twitch, uh, you guys are on a lower level, so it looks like the mic is blocking my face, but it's really not. So. And I am out the I'm, shot. I'm gonna sit up though a little bit. I'm out the shot a little bit, but speaking of shot, it's the best we're gonna be able to Jones, get. Jones, hook me up. Hook him up. You hook me up with a shot. You got a shot guy right there. Yeah, like just come on. You got shotty. That's why with I said, is he shotty, gonna do? Is he shotgun. gonna be the PA or is he gonna just stay? I'm not the handmaid. Oh my god, man! Yeah. What's up? Like, hey, yo, bro, we we build like a high stakes podcast. Oh, yeah, this is high stakes. That's not me. We can't even get this. Yo, you, you you better be glad this is like a late night pod because this is during the day. You would have to go, you know, yeah, go handle that. Whatever you we tell you to handle, cause you got grand 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 Cormino over Yo, here. Who is this? And you know who this person? Oh. Uh, DBA Igor. Oh, that's a uh, Tyler man. Shout out to Igor, uh, man. Igor. He's on Twitch. Yo, Igor, what's up, man? He talking about Jones. He don't know Jones. He knows Jones. What's going Everybody on? knows Jonesy. And the pussy cats. Are you gonna stop this? Stop what? Why would we stop the pod? We would, why would we stop? Why would this we is ever? straight through, baby. This is prime time, baby. One take Drake. One take Drake. Yo, um, but yeah, if you guys are watching, stay. thanks for turn, tuning in. This is a late night pod, so we're like freestyling stuff. Oh, I wanted to talk to you guys about how do you feel about the, was it, uh, um, with the money? Uh, oh, we want to uh, talk about fuck Pentagon. The, yeah, the Pentagon. So the Pentagon has failed its fifth fucking audit, and this year there's two point two trillion dollars oh, missing. God, missing. <coughs> this is ridiculous. How is it missing? It's gone. It's but a la- imagine missing. a citizen or I you know lose forty dollars. I'm looking right, for yeah. Somebody loses the the, the you country, know doesn't pay taxes. The or, country can't even get they they damn taxes right, and they expect us to do it. Yeah. Yo, Shady. This is crazy. That's where that money going. We need some new coals, bro. <laughs> Yo, this is ridiculous. Yo, trying to get something done is like, it's hard to do. Nice yeah. getting the behind the scenes angle. Yeah, thanks, man. I tried. Yo, listen, oh, hold we, on. One second. Just, you know, since we're on Twitch right now, we got Igor in the chat. I just yeah. want to shout out Igor. Who's Igor? Um, Igor is my this homie. Is one of your guys? Yeah, he's, he's a grade A guy. Where is he from? He's from Russia. Oh wow! We straight, got straight from Russia, came to came to America when he was in middle school. Mother Russia. And if you're watching, I would go tap into his Instagram and his TikTok. It's Igor E G O R F B A. He is doing Amazon drop shipping, and he's got a lot of great information over there for y'all to tap into. So you know, definitely go follow. Go be on the lookout for more uh, YouTube content from him. He's probably one of the smartest people I know. So. I call him the first uh, the first billionaire of the group just to uh, manifest and put the good energy out there. So shout out to him. Shout out to Igor. Great guy. He says much love. Much love. Big blessings. So um, maybe shoot us some topics, man. What you going to talk about? Throw something out there, Igor. Let us know what you're looking for. Um, oh, yeah. Definitely be on the lookout for his master class, too. Yeah, like I said though, in the meantime, we uh, we'll get we'll we'll be opening up some tiers for memberships and things like that for you guys to find out some more um, insightful knowledge and in, you know different industries that we're in. I mean, I mean, just to like let the people know, and I just just talk on the late night vibe. Um, I want to create a bunch of different avenues of like streams of income for all of our listeners. You know, all our people, all our followers. So, Jones, what is what is something? Because I know, you, like we said, we talked about entrepreneurship, and you're someone who's always looking for, you know, the next thing. Always to, another, yeah. I'm always always on something thing. else, and we always have long, long conversations about hustles mm-hmm. and things. What are some things you're looking into right now that are, you know, some side hustles or um, avenues you you feel like you want to invest um, into? Uh, well, right now, I would say it's always opportunities. Out here, it's just a you gotta you gotta know how to identify them and know how to capitalize on them. So like, most of the time, I look into the network I have and like, if I got a lot of people over here and they like sell gold, then of course I'm gonna try to find some buyers. Or if I know a lot of people over here who sell cars, then I'm gonna ask some people around me, hey, any y'all need a car? And you know, I try to like, I try to like connect people together, but I also um. 
I'm looking into the trucking industry. I've been doing. I've been. I, I've driven a lot of trucks. Yeah. Like I've had jobs working for companies, but then um, this year, me and my partner, we just decided to, uh, you know, deep dive a little bit more by getting a 26 foot box truck, and just uh, we've been just trying to work it out, getting contracts, and um, just working on those dedicated lanes, trying to. Uh, and that's the system. That's a good way to earn a lot of. Uh, oh my god! It's yeah. a lot of potential. It's a lot of profit to be made, and, and it's a lot of. Uh, how can I say this? Like, um, it's a lot of uh, like residual income. So like, um, and passive income. As far as like, you know, once you put your driver in that seat, you know, you can sit home and still make money while you sleep. Right. You're just a dispatcher now. Exactly. You're finding rides exactly. and loads to uh, be yep. transported across the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, Igor actually put me onto that. He was him and his dad started something over there, and they they got the trucking thing popping off. And he was explaining it all to me and how uh, you know the biggest investment is just getting your truck. And once you get the truck and you know you LLC and get the yep. the proper documentation yeah, MC, that you need, yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's pretty uh, pretty shout straightforward Qu- from there. Shout out Quadair, he's the uh, hardworking guy. He's got a CDL Class A, top tier. Yep, top tier. Big dog shit. See, yeah, I'm more on it. Like I said, everything I do, I'm always like more in that lane. Far as like b- business administration, I would say. I'm. Uh, so you like to manage and uh, oversee yeah, rather than I would say be on I would, the ground but I, level. But I am like a like I'm like what you would call like a creative businessman. So oh, like, definitely. So like yeah, my like I'm not calling myself this at all. But like I'm more of like a Dame Dash type of businessman than like a a. a you know who Damon John is? Yeah, of course. From Fubu. Yeah, I'm more of a Dame Dash than a Damon John. Man, I got so a, like, I got a story about Damon John. Yeah, but um, he's a dope. He's, he's dope. Uh, but yeah, I got my hands in a lot of different things. Always, the streams of income is always I've I've known from the beginning. Like that's one of the most important things. You gotta make money different ways because you never know when something gonna slow up anyway. But speaking on like more, you know sturdy and solidified income like from what from what i'm gathering from what you're saying is you know you like to just go where you find that there's things you know money where i find a demand right so So like if i hear if i if i'm if i'm seeing that you know i'm hearing there's more loads than it is trucks on the road then i'm gonna go find me a truck if i'm like in another and if i'm like doing some like see me i'm like i'm in the research if i'm in the research so i'm sorry i'm getting a little distracted i got the eco lab phone over here um they sending jobs through but uh yeah if i'm doing research and trying to figure out how to make money and i'm like all right what can i do that's what i'm always trying to find for the demand like you know what's going on outside like what's needed like you know what are people like asking for like you know because i don't it's like i understand the concept of creating something and making your the demand for it but you know when you out here and you trying to eat and you really using this money to like pay bills and do everything you need to do you got to go where with the people you know telling you you know you got to go with what the people want so um i just try to find a demand and then meet the meet the customers in the middle. As someone who's you know you know knowing you and knowing you for a long time, you've probably had a, a lot of different hustles, a lot of different you know side endeavors that you've always. gotten into, and uh, you know always made some profit off of those types of things. What do you think? Where do you think you would be if you you know LLC'd every side hustle and oh you know put your time really into it to you know make it a full fledged company and. And, and drive the business I mean, for that. At this point, I probably had like twenty businesses. Yeah, I didn't, I feel conservative like, number. Yeah, I didn't like try to like. I try everything, man. Like, I'm not scared of nothing. I'm not like, if I hear it makes money and I'm like looking at the numbers and the number makes sense, I'm gonna try it. Mm. Like, yeah, I'm not scared to try nothing. But you got to be super open minded, especially being an entrepreneur. Like I said, everything is always changing, bro. You got to always be able to adapt out here. Like right now, we going through a little reset, going through a little shift. It's post pandemic, you know. Everybody trying to figure out what's the uh, what's about to be the rhythm of how you know the world moving right, and stuff. Back to a normal pace. Yeah, what's going to be the normal pace and like 
can we say this? Can we say that? You know what I mean? So, you know what still fucks me up about the whole like post pandemic shit that we're in right now mm-hmm. is people. I don't know if it's just like an excuse at this point or maybe it's still somewhat of an issue, but saying the logistical issues are, are fucking everything up and oh yeah we're, we're back ordered on this like do you really think that's still it's not a thing now more so i feel like it's just like an excuse to give people more like leeway for their products and their services like yeah you know we're backed up we got this we got that the logistic we can't get this it's, I, don't, it's not I feel too, like for some industries it might be legit but it's not too much of that going on right now but when the pandemic was at its peak I can understand why it was going on because it was a lot of different rules and regulations being put in place that was slowing things up because they didn't want things, everybody spreading everything around. But, um, but now I would say like, I don't know what's this, what's about to happen, honestly, with this, after this reset, you know, I really don't know. I'm, things are slow right now for a lot of people in their businesses and stuff like that. That's why I'm more so looking at like, things that like i said demand is high people need right uh and for myself like uh like you were saying looking where the demand is high and trying to find you know things that are lucrative that aren't being kind of set back right now by covid delays or mm -hmm. you know whatever the reset may be and that's kind of why i've been looking into drop shipping and i've been studying a lot of stuff what's going on with that see i've always i've looked into it before myself um, when I was look, honestly, when I was, look, I used to buy uh, a lot of pallets and things like that, and like uh, I was buying them here and there, and then like what, flipping what them. Oh, just picking up the pallets themselves. Yeah, and just selling Dude, everything. Some people make in. a lot of money doing that. Yeah. I've seen people post them up for no, free you, on no, Facebook. I have, and, yeah, I've, yeah. My, I have a Macari account with like over. Shout out to oh, Macari. Yeah, with like almost Great like app. four grand in total sales. Like, Sheesh. I sell, I sell a lot of stuff online. That's another thing I forgot to talk about. Yeah. Oh, E-commerce, man. I sell a lot online, bro. I sell more than a lot of people think. Like, yeah. I sell a lot of shit online. Yeah, when I didn't have a job for a little bit, I was flipping iPads, iMacs, see, and what, shit oh, like see, that. Like, that's something, like, I'm, like, such a business guy, bro. I'm, I do business without even, like, think, like, it's, like, natural. Like, I don't right. even, like, like, bro, when I buy certain clothes, I... Um, but yeah, to go back to what you were asking before we started going down about a little bit of a business stuff. Um, so drop shipping, the whole, there's two ways you can do we it. We got a caller on a pod. We got the infamous 524G. G, what up? I'm back on the pod. What's going on? Back on the pod. Pull up. Yeah, man. We doing a late show tonight. Okay. See no more. I'm to still. Yeah. What's up, my boy? What's up? What y'all talking about tonight? Y'all don't like you on the pie. He over there on the phone. All right, there you go. Yeah, our uh, our uh, intern kind of sucks, but <laughs> he's checking his fantasy football scores yeah. right now. This pot is a lifestyle. Yeah, this pot is a vibe. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> his fantasies, man. He it's all me Patriots like players. Right. He don't draft nobody else. <laughs> he's crazy. He's so loyal to his team, he only drafts Patriots. Oops. You. Man, listen, I'm going to call you back. We're about to get off. Um, but, yeah, so there's two ways you can do it with the drop shipping. Uh, you can create your own storefront, you know, a Shopify or, you know, Squarespace, whatever you want to use to create your storefront. You know, you can set it up with Stripe or mm -hmm. one of the uh, processing, you know, electronic payment uh, services. Uh, and that's a way to get it in. But basically what, you know, the whole thing is you – you decide on a product and either you look at current products that are relevant and you try to make a change to that product. You look at, you know, customer complaints or, you know, what they don't like about it. You read the comments and you start to gauge and you're like, okay, well, they wish that it had, you know, softer, you know, fur on the toy or, you know, they wish, you know, the, the product was a little bit bigger. It came in a, a pristine package. So you try to reach out to manufacturers and find, people who can produce those types of things that you want and you know you're right. dealing with alibaba or um i believe aliexpress is another one there may be some some ua u.s based uh suppliers that you can look into too i don't like alibaba i don't trust the site <laughs> oh no um like e igor's been using alibaba he's got some great success uh shout out to him he's about to drop his his product 
I will be oh, first I'm not in line doubting the cop. success. Nah, there, it's definitely a trustworthy thing. You can use the Man, system on the side. if it ain't U.S. made, I don't want it. All right, you paying that U.S. tag? Yes. I'm so no I'm so U.S. You so U.S.? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. If it, if, listen, if it works for you, use it. But, uh, yeah, so you basically are, you know, contacting manufacturers and, you know, doing the dirt, doing the legwork and figuring out what you want as a for your product and Facts. the specifications you want. You order some samples. You know, coming from China, it's going to take a little time. You either send it by sea, send it by air, depending how your Shout bag out is set Switch. up. I'm loving the growth. We got about like three, four new followers tonight. Hell yeah. You know, yo, yo, it. yo, Everybody yo. Everybody counts. We're going to do something special for y'all. Y'all going to see the Oh, growth. man. I, I don't know about y'all, but I was uh, had a slight conversation with Quadir about this, about like a give back for followers and when we mm -hmm. hit a certain mark. Definitely. I, I've been thinking about a few different things, and I definitely think there's going to be a couple ways that, uh, you know, we can... We can show you that we care about you and, you know, right. say thank you for your viewership and, you know, just we, we greatly appreciate it. You know, this is what we're doing it for. Um, yeah, shout out to all the early subscribers, followers, people that like, people comment. Um, I always say, like, I know, I know people don't comment usually in the beginning, but uh, even if you say great video, anything, it helps the algorithm on YouTube, it helps the algorithm on Instagram. Um you know, obviously, you always can share, but if you don't want to be that person that spams your friends with reels, uh, like I said, just like and comment. comment. Let us know how you feel. You know I what mean? I mean? Because I'm, I'm not trying to like push you guys to like send this to anybody, but um, I don't want to get too more far in that. Still but, um, show, man. I'm not gonna lie. I want to talk about that Grand Carmino. What you want to talk about with that? Okay, Grand so Carmino. I'm a fan of tequila. I love tequila. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I've been drinking. This is the first time I'm drinking Grand Carmino, Kevin Hart's, but I've drank um, Dwayne Wade's uh, mm -hmm. Terramana. Never had no, that. No, Terramana is crazy. Oh, I love Terramana. I had to yes, stop drinking. Terramana I was drinking it too much. crazy. You'll be drunk as fuck off Oh, my Terramana. God. I love Terramana. And then... Um, yeah, mm, Terramana is, that what? is crazy. Yeah, that's the rocks. And um, also, everybody likes Casamigos. Lobo, Lobos? I don't really like Casamigos. Have, Casa, you, had, have you, you had know who Lobos? Casamigos is? Who? George Clooney? George Clooney. Yo, I went out board it for the first time because I, I, everybody's drinking in the club, but I, I never went out board it. Yeah, George Clooney, but how you, I don't know how you guessed that. You had to know. I don't know. The, There's no way you're going to guess Lobos? that. Have you had Lobos? LeBron's Lobos? No, it's no. trash. No, it's but listen, not. It's, I will say, listen, great. listen, Casamigos, Terramana, and uh, Grand Carmino, I've had them all three. And I'm going to say Grand Carmino, Terramana, then Casamigos. I'm not going to lie. That's just my take out of those three. They're all good, but I think Casamigos, to me, it doesn't taste as pure and just, you could drink it have without you had anything. 19, have you had a 1942? Yeah. Who hasn't had I feel like that's just an, an expensive. Uh, this is not as smooth as hell. Bro. No, 1942, but you know what's funny? It don't Don taste Julio. as good as these these other ones. Have you had Classy Azul? Of course. It's Multiple great. times. It's great. What's classy azul? It's the one in the, the uh, one that looks the, like in the, the white and the blue. Is it, is it classy azul? Or classy azul. No, it's classy azul. Uh, azul. Don't do that language. Don't do that language. I can speak say Spanish. Say it like Classy <laughs> azul. No, come on. He tried to sound like you now. Go ahead and say it again. Classy azul. Classy azul. Uh, shout out to classy azul. I've never had. Shout you. out yes, to you all had. my bilingual had brothers. Anderson Pack had us on that. Oh shit! The white bottle. Yeah, the, the white bottle with like the blue. Man, that shit trash. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. Right, I had that. It's expensive. It's good, it's but expensive. I think the best tequila I've had in my life was Terramana. Terramana, but I like up. this is my first time trying this, and this is just smooth. Maybe I'm, you know, I gotta mix time. it. I can't drink it straight. But your shot, you said you got the what? The black bottle. Wait, they have a black Cormino. How much is that bottle? Because this was like fifty-one, I think, I after Texas. Know. They have a black Cormino. Friends in high places. Hmm. Yes, man. So how y'all feel about how y'all how y'all feel about this game coming up? We know Jalen Hurts is option. He's a uh, Eagles questionable. He might Minshew, yo yo yo. Minshew. Shout out, oh, shout out to my man Tano Passio, and uh, yeah, he's coming to play the Eagles, and I can't wait to he smack Jalen Hurts. And um, yeah, it is what it is. What? He's a Philadelphia native. Uh, so I think I, I don't yeah. Think he's gonna smack is Jalen Hurts from Philadelphia? I don't. He's playing. From is he Philadelphia. from Philadelphia? Playing okay, so he doesn't breathe the same air as Kobe and T 
Tano and these what? classic, these tr these great athletes. So, uh, Tano, will you get a chance? You know who to hit? What are you doing over here? The light went off. This guy's messing with the light behind us, and the light just no, went off. No. But we're going to keep it going from here. Uh, we're going to slide it down a little bit. And I'll keep it right there. We're all well, good. But okay. It, it, but listen, shout out to Pe Tano. That's my man. Great friend. Great guy. Uh, great football player. I think it got and too shout hot, out to them. bro. Oh, shit. It's 113. 113. 113 for the black ball. Oh, they competing with 1942. Wow. It got too hot, I think. Yeah, probably. No, it's probably dead. But, um, yeah. But, yeah, out of all those tequilas. You never had it. They're good. <laughs> Did you drink that yet? You didn't drink it yet. You got to crack it open. Oh yeah, we'll crack that. Did you try? Did you try this kind? You need to try this kind so you know. Can if you it's pour worth me the a drink? Can you pour me a drink, bro? Seventy dollars. What the? What's this? What's this guy's deal? Yo, with that? okay. Um, we're looking for someone that's gonna come we in. We need a real PA, uh, that's camera about operator, their job. and somebody that can also fetch what? us things during the episode. Oh, yeah. Yo, pour us a fucking drink, yo. I just want you to pour <laughs> me a drink. Bro, you don't want these two muscular guys to come fuck you up right now. Because it could happen. It really could. Y'all want them to see without... I put you right we all the got that. window. <laughs> we all got the firepower. Not right now. Look, yes, bro, I do. I'm about to see a fight on this the This is pod. the world's most dangerous podcast. I have it on me. Three hots on the cot. What? Hots on never. the cot. Okay. You That's to, not you. You've never been to jail. Don't use that That's word. That's not you. You ain't got no foul on you. You're talking about three hots in the cot. Huh? Hmm? <laughs> Yo, you listen, no listen, listen. You ain't got no foul on you. No five. Yeah, so anybody looking to uh, intern, be a PA, learn some camera operator, uh, you know. Techniques. Yeah, you might learn things. some shit out here. We're Honestly, though, somebody. yeah. Any young guys that want to, you know, learn some stuff, uh, we'll put them on. I'll personally put them on, you know, show them this, you know, just camera Because, you work. know, I don't know. Have you ever put anybody on? Put you? that shit on. That's crazy. Yeah, that's nasty. He's about myself. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he's been talking about some crazy shit lately. I don't know uh, if we can trust him anymore. He's, listen, he got listen, an upside trust, down cross. Trust on his, is a uh, word that you hand, can't use for everybody. Like the Antichrist. For our next segment, upside down seven. <laughs> oh what? shit! All right, so this just segued me into it. So this guy's been talking a lot about some satanic rituals. I don't man. listen. We can't talk like that. I don't Twitch. even. They're gonna take our. Vid yeah, I'm, no. I'm disgusted. I'm appalled. Yeah, he's um, he's a. Um, He's chiseled by God, but somehow became a Satanist. This is different. This is very different. Yeah, so, um, what's up? Late night pods are cool, but we need some guests. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Caller number nine. Hello, how are you? Uh, this is, uh, me guests. I call some people through. I'll call some people through. Shout out to my man Mike at Handsome Father Brand. He has a podcast, but it's called the Michael Anthony Project. And nah, honestly, I'm a fan of it. Uh, this guy is an actor. He's a great actor. He's a great friend of mine. And he's been out here putting out a podcast episode after episode. I love the grind. Keep going. Uh, we're going to have him on here eventually. Uh, we're just getting our stuff together, getting our list of, I mean, I feel like our I'm first talking guest to some, has to be some, some yeah, serious yeah, yeah. pressure. I'm talking know? to some guys and... Yeah, just say, you know, it could be Charlie Mack. I don't know. What y'all feeling? Charlie Mack? Mm. Yeah. Charlie Mack. I might, it might be Charlie Mack. It might be another Philadelphia native. Um, but yeah, we're going to get some people on here. Um, shout out to Wiz Gam. We definitely got to have Wiz Gam on here. He's a legend in Philadelphia for music, and he's been putting in the grind for a long time. So shout out him. We're going to have him on the pod ASAP. There's a lot of stuff I want to do. I want to hit a lot of corners. Uh, I want to shine light on the people that don't have light on them. Give them their flowers um, while they're here. Absolutely, man. I feel like some people get into this negative thing where they don't even want to show people no love, man. Fuck no. Nobody wants to show love. And that shit is crazy. Like, love will get you killed. I, not even to that extent. I'm just talking about like just giving credit where credit is due. No, like love nobody, will get you killed. nobody will literally <laughs> show you show you no hey, respect for nothing. Out somebody out blow your brains out for love. You got a pest field message about over here. Yo, yo, you gotta come get your phone, man. This guy has ten phones. <laughs> There's a roach infestation. They need you. Oh. <laughs> Too much za, man. Can't catch. You smoke some Zai, you can't catch no more. His hand-eye coordination. Was you a receiver? No. 
Yeah, when you yeah when you played in high school, what position did you play? Safety. He I was, was running back. He ain't locked nothing down. He was running back. Yeah, all state. Uh, I could have all went, state. I could have went to Vanderbilt. You, you went know, all you state. Know. You went all, <laughs> all state. <laughs> that's, the, that's the only time you went all state. <laughs> Never. First of all, Mister, uh, I'm an athlete over here. <laughs> I've known Brittany Griner since I was in yeah. high school. Fuck out of here. You had one game. And you talk about you got injured that's, and you were done. That's the only time you went all state. <laughs> Fifteen minutes, one assist. <laughs> you in good hands. Yo, shout state. out to Pop Water, man. <laughs> I really played with the Aztecs before. Like I really was an Aztecs boy. You was an Aztec. I wasn't. We didn't play Aztec. Yo. <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, I will call. Yo. I will call mom right now. Call her. Bruh. Bruh. Okay, I'll call dad right now. Let me go. Oh, uh, alright then. Yeah, I play Aztecs. Uh, you didn't have a helmet. You used to share your helmet. Chill out. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, all the good players got their helmets and they got to pick their face mask. He used to have to share his helmet with the. Uh, he had him and two guys had to come to an agreement. No, like, it was it was it got too bad where when they used to play a team, we used to, the coach used to go to the other team like y'all got an extra helmet. Oh shit! <laughs> so they didn't know. He was an unofficial player. <laughs> they, didn't know, they didn't know where he was going to play. Yeah, he had the right jersey, but the wrong helmet. So he the only guy. He was like, knows. what do you mean? Like, it's our colors. It's our. He's like, man, what do you want me to do? You want to take the kid? <laughs> like, yeah. You play so. soccer? Me? Yeah. No, you know what's funny? I've always wanted to play soccer, though. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Messi, yo. The yeah, World Cup. Shit. Oh, yo, shit. Christian Alvaro, you're not the top guy. Listen, in oh, high school, shit. it was all messy. Shout out to everybody. Aunt, Henrik, everybody. Y'all know when in high school, it was messy. And you know everybody was like Ronaldo was the guy, but no, nah, I'm I'm it's great. How do you feel about? Uh, um, well, you know they were saying who's the best because neither one Mbappe. of them had won, huh? Kylian and Mbappe. Listen, Kylie and Mbappe. Uh, you say I'm Muslim. You know, Alhamdulillah, shout out to me. Uh, shout out to you. Uh, is he Muslim? That was haram. Okay, you can't be talking like that. Okay? Listen, man. Shout out to those people. No, listen, here. I respect that religion. You tripping? I don't play with nobody religion. Yeah. But what I will say is, uh, shout out to them. Shout out to him. But shout out to Messi because he just proved Mbappe that he's the top guy. Is the guy from France who he was playing against who was really great too. They saying he's better than all of them. He just lost the game. He lost to Bessie. Yeah. Yeah, but, the young guy. He was the, yeah, he's he's the guy. he's better than everybody. He's yeah, the guy well, right now. I'm not too into soccer, but I knew Messi. I knew Ronaldo. Yeah. You Who doesn't get know this guy? Get, in, get into it. Also, um, if you didn't know, he's Messi, old, but this was his Messi first photo cup. is now the number one like photo on Instagram. Really? Yes. He okay. broke the record. I don't know who had the record before. Bro, did you that. see the, the, who had the record before in Argentina yeah. after they won? Shh. Who had the record before? The World Cup is every four years, Who had the record before? I think you were saying it. You got me telling people, shh. I said he's retired. Well, the World Cup is every four years, correct? Yeah, something like that. Four or eight? Three, eight. No, it's not. It's like every three or four years. The next four. one is. So it's like the Olympics? The, the next one is. The next one is. The next one is the nah, look it up. Look it up. Your RPA. The Come next on. World Cup is like uh, look it 2025. Up. I think the next World Cup is 2025. Well. I think that's the first World Cup that I will attend. I'm obsessed with I'm it. calling that out. I'm speaking in advance. I'm obsessed We with will be at the World Cup 2025 Listen. repping Messi. No, he won't be playing anymore. Whoa. But he's already old. But listen. But don't do that. Yes, don't just throw that out there. Done. How old is this guy? Messi? Yeah. He's like 43. No. Look it up. Is I he say, really 43? Yes. I say 39. He's like 40, is he 43? 30. Listen, yes. he has black in him? No. Black don't crack. He's Argentinian. Well, he doesn't. He didn't crack. Unless you smoke it. Whoa. <laughs> well, listen. Listen, my P our PR guy is uh, looking up Messi's age. How old is Messi? How old is Messi? He's the worst PA. He's fired. Yo, he's done. Listen, <laughs> listen. Shout out to Messi though. You know, I like the uh, they won the World Cup. Yes. Yo, I heard Drake bet, but he lost. Yeah. Is it true that he lost? Huh? How old is he? No, the what? next World Cup is 2026. No, how old is Messi? Leonardo Messi. His name is not Leonardo Messi. What is it? His name is, uh, what is it? Um, Lionel. Lionel. Lionel Messi. Lionel, Lionel Messi? Yeah. yeah. Well, the American word for Lionel Messi is Leonardo Messi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying at this point. I'm just throwing things out there. The same way point. his name, your dad's name is Richard, so they call him Dick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, real shit though. They talk about seeing father. You dick. 
<laughs> yo, yo, how did that become a nickname, bro? I just yeah, like who, know. who decided? Like, are we gonna use that? For hey, that? hey, Richard, what? Yeah. <laughs> Your new name's Dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they came. Like, up. when did that come about? Uh, what crazy. do you want on your name tag, Dick or Richard? Uh, we'll go Dick. And man. then somebody can call him Bob too. Mm, I yeah, don't think, I don't. I think it's Robert. Is so, Bob? So t- Tyler said there's <laughs> no there's no person named Bob. No, that's oh, not what, what I said. That's, that's not crazy. what I did said. Did he say that? Yes, he did. No, say that. that's not what I said. said. I said those. nine times out of ten, their name isn't really Bob. That's it's false. Robert. No, that's no, false. No, I've no, met no. a lot of Bobs who's just Bob. Okay. And I quickly huh? said Bob. Just the Bob. You yes. saw that you saw their uh You said what? Their yes. birth certificate. Yes. Just B O B. We was in school, B O B. B O B. First you of all, sure? that's 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 he had dots in between. You talking about the rapper? No. No. We what the, we're talking the rapper about B.O.B. Did no, you call him Bob, Bob or B.O.B.? They called him Bob, but his name was B.O.B. His name stood for something. What we're talking name, about bars the over, Bob. Yeah, bars, bars over, over Baghdad or something. I don't nah, know. it wasn't bars, <laughs> bars <laughs> over Baghdad. <laughs> it definitely wasn't bars. over Baghdad. Yo, no, bro. He's listening to too much Cassidy. Nah, Check out of here. Look up what Bob Yo, says. You 2008 <laughs> Cassidy. <laughs> he talking about Bob's over Baghdad. Yeah, what the fuck happened to Cassidy, bro? Yo, chill out. He on the, Cassie, fuck him up when you see he him. He's doing ICDC commercials now. No, no, no. You know what's no. funny? Cassidy is literally top three best bars ever. Better rapping now, though. He's better rapping now. That's what he's doing. He's doing that because it's like. Yo, did you all hear about Pat culture. Stay dying? Who? Pat Stay. But yeah. Pat Stay. Pat Stay was he looks one of like the. Tyler. I don't know who Pat Stay is. <laughs> don't even Yo, look alike. This guy Yo, looks does like anybody Pat know who Stay. Absol is? Oh, oh my shit. <laughs> yo, yo, if you I don't sw- know, you yo, need listen, to know. I swear yo, I know this guy, yo. yo Black lip bastard. Yo. Why do you want to bag on Absol so, so bad. bad? He like is he a rapper? He's yes, a rapper, bro. A I've never rapper. heard his music before. He's the whole he started the TDE with Kendrick and shit. He was he, he was he was a pioneer with the TDE shit, bro. Come on, man. Pioneer really. Real yes. shit. He's still independent. Shout out to Absol. I have no beef with you, but I don't listen. I, I don't. would love to have you on the pod. He's Ab. the okay. It's like this. Nobody says turn on that new Absol. Never. <laughs> Yo, people That's send crazy. me music. I've never heard that. Like, okay, so he reminds me of like, honestly, put it this way: if I heard Absol drop the album in Chameleon Air, I'm buying Chameleon Air's album. Yeah, Chame- I bought a Chameleon Air album when he was yeah, hot. Yo, up. Chameleon is a good business. What? Shit. Yes, he up. is. Yo, he's a he's great a, businessman. He's a great guy. He's better than Absol. Never. I guarantee you he got more money than Absol. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's better than Absol, for sure. Pat Poos is better than Absol. Pat Poos is actually good, though. Pat, Pat Poos is, nice. is Pat out. Pat Poos is nice. You know, one time I was just on Pat Poos' Instagram, Pat. I'm like, yo. He, he got bars. He wrote Five he, Barrels of Death. You don't understand. I got New York City in the palm of my hand. I can okay, make a type guy, of Guys like that, who do you think Who do you think he, we were talking about when we, like, he, wrote, he wrote for a lot of people? Who? Pat Poos. I used to have soul. He didn't write for no, no one. No. Oh. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's talk ghostwriters because you try to say people write for Jay-Z. So you said Absol didn't There's write for Kendrick. people who have wrote for Jay-Z. Yeah. No. It's no one has wrote for yes, Jay-Z. Yes. It absolutely, has. bro. No, I'm oh standing on stop, this. Bro. No one has ever. If Quadir someone, made a bold statement. Quadir said, <laughs> if you're saying <laughs> that nobody you. wrote for Jay-Z, you're saying that rap is fake. No, oh, no, no. Let, Wait, literally. Let him say it. Go what? ahead. What? I told you. <laughs> B.O.B., yes. the rapper name, is literally stands for Bombs Over Baghdad. Yes, Bullshit. But listen, what? you trying to say Jay-Z had his <laughs> verses written. I'm not saying he had every bar written for him. I'm saying that Jay-Z has had songs that he has had people ghostwrite for him. Never. Okay, bro. That like you're just you're living behind this fantasy land where you you believe. Pull that- up a reference track or your chatty Kathy. Yo, PA, can you pull some shit up? Because I was told no phones on the No, pod. no. I want to hear a reference track. Play a reference track. I'm going to be honest. If you tell me Jay-Z has somebody write his raps for him. Now, let's be honest. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Let's finish. No, no. Let's make sure we know what we're talking about. We're not talking about somebody that makes a hook for a song, a concept. We're talking about someone that writes a 16 and someone writes your rap. We're not talking about the hook, right? We're not saying like no. See, prime bro. example, like the Holy Grail song when uh when uh what's his name um Justin uh, thing. Justin Timberlake. Same thing you got. Sorry, was that Justin Timberlake that made Holy Grail the hook? Yeah. yeah. 
Justin Timberlake did the hook on Holy Grail, right? We're not talking about the people that do the hook or write hooks. We're talking about a 16. That when he 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. If you're right, if someone's writing that rap, you're like destroying hip hop. Like he has to write that rap, right? See, this is what I'm, I'm asking a question. Does he have to write that rap or hip hop is not real? I I think that if, listen, bursts if Jay-Z a bubble, gets his listen, if Jay-Z gets his raps written, Drake is the best fucking rapper to Drake ever live. Drake gets his raps written. No, 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 no. Drake gets I his raps written. I understand that. And listen, but a lot of stuff he writes on his own, right? Like Drake's For a sure. great phenomenal artist all around. But if you care. look at the credits on most tracks, it'd be, you know, Aubrey Graham and then it'll have three or four mm. other people on it. Yeah, he wrote Still Dre in no, like no, 10 no, minutes. No, that's, 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 saying, that's not news. Drake is the greatest artist ever. When I say artist, I'm not saying rapper. I'm not putting him up against these just straight rappers. I'm saying person that can make music. Okay, He's the best person ever to, after Michael Jackson in my book. But to separate both of them and to look at Jay-Z to finish the argument that we're having right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying that maybe... He, you know, for all we know, 99 problems and reasonable doubt and all that shit, you know, he probably wrote that because that was right. early on. But I'm talking when you get to a certain level of commercialized artist status, there are people in that room that are writing raps and helping you write no, raps. And no. I'm not saying it's bar for bar. Everything's no. written by somebody else. I'm saying reference track for Jay-Z. You think Jay-Z is listening to a reference track, going there, taking what he want and finishing it? You think he's doing I don't that? know about that, but he might have somebody in the Jones, studio or somebody who wrote something that's for him. That's not his creative process. I'm asking you. That's not his so, creative so process. So give me a position his creative that he process. It's having another guy in here who he think is nice on the mic too and who he respect his pen and he go and put him in the studio with him and say, let's listen to these beats, bro. Let's put this shit together. That's what that's what it is. And it's I don't like, think he's doing that. Bro, it's been done already. Come on, bro. It's songs that his, already has other people have credits on. Like I said, it's people who's bro, giving him bro, songs. Bro. It's people on credits for saying like, yo, I wouldn't say bitch. I would say chick. Bro. That, you didn't write my rap. Right, bro. I'm not saying, like I said, but, but, got, but, but I guess I no, think we're bro. looking at two different things. Because Pusha T's not getting his raps written. Like I said, if Pusha T's not getting his raps written. I don't know. I don't know. So what are we talking about? I don't know. 500 Jay Z songs, maybe Shoddy. six. Andre 2000 of them are said, I was him. under the Shoddy. impression that everybody writes their own raps. Look up if Pusha T writes all this shit. We got the PA on it. Well, we know Pusha T writes, so he really would add Drake for him writing his own raps. But I just don't like what I'm not, what I'm trying to get to you is so when you're starting off and you're coming up into an industry, nobody is willing to give their hand and their penmanship out for you. So you are on the strength of your own pen. Unless you have somebody in your camp from the beginning who is helping you write your shit. Right. You're on your own from the beginning. That's cat and though. Th I don't think so. because Everybody's not doing that, bro. I'm not saying everybody's doing it. I'm saying once you step into this status, this realm, you're at this level. There is people in the room who are helping you write your raps. There is people on the label who are there to help you give, you know, creative insight to what you want to write no. or what they want. And what? Jones, come on, bro. What, like you got to no see that people. For J. Cole. No one's I'm not writing. saying listen, J. Cole. Listen, listen, listen. Let's, let's be honest, right? Drake collaborate with somebody, right? Cause they're 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 saying that now you could collaborate on raps because Drake did it, right? Right. So I'm not mad at people that do that, and I'm not taking anything from Drake. But what I'm saying is, if you're telling me people are literally going in writing a 16, and then you go and pick what you want, that's where the problem. But comes that in. may not be the exact way that it gets done. It may be somebody in the room that's with you, and he's like. Nah, scratch that whole line. You yeah. put this whole shit in right here. This works. He gets the credit oh, for that. Oh, that's a producer. Producers do that. I'm not, but okay, but that's you're, not, you're, you're okay. You're confusing it. You're confusing it. No, 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 no. Nobody's what confusing is writing anything. Raps? What is writing raps? What does that mean to you? In, in my eyes, if you're talking about an artist who completely writes their raps, they do not take anybody's criticism. In that's my fake. I, no, in my, you're Bro, asking me. I've you're asking me, though. But, 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 but let me but finish. I'm telling you, that's not the creative process ever. When you're in the studio with a bunch of artists, <laughs> people might, you might go in, the, I watch the artist go in the booth and he comes out and they all listen to it. And hey, yo, bro, you should have said, uh, you shouldn't have said bitch, you should have said chick, like I just said. Okay, but you're talking That's about not... one word. I'm talking about somebody is in there with you. They are a writer for Rock Nation, Atlantic Records, whatever the, the mainstream record is. They're in there and they're like, yo, 
I don't even so, think that's commercial. I, I just want to know this. No, no, hold bro. No, no I want to no. know this. Y'all got to understand no, what the writing rap is, on. bro. No, look, I want to know this. For the entirety of his whole fucking career and his whole everything, right. every day he lives, his right. whole, what is, what is, every studio session, what do you think went on? I think he, bro, Rick Rubin already said it. Jay-Z is the best rapper ever. He goes in there, he listens to it, he mumbles. Listen, first time he goes in there, he mumbles a bunch of stuff. And I'm saying. And then he comes out and then he does it again and, and, I'm and saying, it's done. This is what you believe every time. Yes. <laughs> Bro, he's living life still. Okay. You know why I think it is? Because he's not a rapper that's still talking about what everybody's talking about now. He's going in there rapping a grown man level. So that's, he doesn't have no, to need somebody to bro, reference that because he's he just he, elevating he's, his, he's not always, his conversation, he bro. He hasn't always been the Jay-Z he is now, bro. Bro, Jay, no one writes for Jay-Z. Okay, 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 okay guess what? If, if somebody writes for Jay-Z, Beanie Siegel would have said he don't write his raps. What are you Freeway talking about? Nope, b- bro. Beanie Siegel, when he went at him, he's never surprised if Beanie wrote rap. some shit for him. No, he, he never wrote nothing for rap. Jay-Z. It's people who's... It's right, bro, Jay Z like, does not write. Bro, Jay Z writes his own fucking raps, bro. Yeah, bro. If you're telling me Jay Z does not write his raps, I don't even. You're what saying hip hop's fake if he if he it's, doesn't. It, it's fake as in the sport. But that's the whole commercialized property of fucking rap right now. No, bro. no, no, bro. People are in there writing fucking songs for all these different people. There are Styles P, fucking Jada Kiss, Ghost Rip for mad people in the industry. I'm gonna say this: the only time somebody can write for you, honestly, when you're making her loss, when you're making um. Uh, the drama with Future and Drake. What you mean? I'm saying is because Future like and Drake vibe? are trying to make a certain type of vibe. So I respect that. If y'all want to help each other with bars, that's cool because you're coming together to a collective. So this album has to make sense, right? Because no, Drake could be thinking something else and Future could be thinking something else, right? But what I'm saying is where it goes wrong is if this is my song and you're writing a rap, I don't respect that. So what I'm saying is... If you're collaborating on a project, then that's yeah. Different. No, I agree. So if you're talking about her loss and it's Twenty One Savage and it's Drake and they're helping each other finish bars, I think that's fucking in yeah. The that's sport cool. Of, yeah, yeah, that's like, in I the lane. I don't care about that. But what I'm your ta- album needs to be written by you from but your experiences. That's just, but that's just not how it is anymore. I feel like there's there's people who have a commercialized look. Not Jay Z, okay. bro. All right. So Jay Z is just just just. Okay, prime example. Lil Wayne, uh, Gilly said he was writing Lil Wayne raps, right? Said he wrote the whole that, Carter that, too. Okay, that's cool, right? Then Lil Wayne, after that, has never read a rap wrote for him ever. And he had gas forever. Whoever, name one other person that can say they wrote for, for Lil Wayne. And once Lil Wayne, Gilly stopped writing for Lil Wayne, he took off. I, w- I would have to do my research because I don't, I don't have Gilly any of the, the facts. Kid. Yes, Gilly the Kid. Shout out to Gilly the Kid, yes, Philadelphia native. He go. Yes, he, he okay. He wrote for Lil Wayne, but I'm saying after that, I've never heard anybody say they wrote for Lil Wayne again, bro. Because these ghostwriters, most of the time, they have a gag order on them. And so they, you think someone wrote for Lil Wayne, bro? I don't know, bro. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised Shotty. if someone in Young Money was writing for Lil Wayne. The drought, no, the drought was the that's drought two. Head. No, that's his. That's the him. drought three. Okay, the look. Drought three is good. All right, so look, look. You know Your the song. One. Hold on, look. Quiet air, quiet air. You know the song. You know the song. Jay Z. Uh, you feeling like a pimp, baby? Go and brush your shoulders off. Ladies is pimp too. Yeah. Go and brush your shoulders off. Classic. These niggas crazy, baby. Don't forget that boy told you get that dirt, dirt off, off your, your shoulders. shoulders. Who the fuck is Timothy Mosley? He probably wrote. He probably helped write the hook. <laughs> who the fuck is Timothy? <laughs> who the yeah, fuck immediately is Timothy to the hook. I don't care who he is. I don't. But who is he? We don't know who All he right, is. All right, define who he is. All right, I'm about to. What look did he him do up. for the song? He he's on this. When you look up song, the songwriters, it says him and Sean Carter. And that, that's another he thing. That's, a, that's another thing. If their name he comes second, that means they're not the majority bro, on. So it comes by who puts his the majority name to see on. See what kind of music he puts out. You could All tell right. if he wrote Jay Z verse. But I'm saying this is why I don't you know don't if that's know these. But I'm saying this is why you don't bro, know who these y'all people are. Y'all are crazy, bro. Y'all got Jay Z fucked up, bro. No one's writing for fucking Jay Z. Timberland. Timberland's writing for Jay Z. That's that's who Timberland Mosley is. Come on, bro. That was that was Timberland. No, no, that says songwriter. That doesn't say produc- yes. production credit. No, production does not go under production songwriter. Production credit is different. Production than does not go under song. Yeah, if you're just tapping in, listen, these guys think Jay Z gets his raps written. Kanye West gets his raps written. I put Nas over Jay Z. Never. Yeah. You lost your mind. No. Nas is great. Nah, I put Nas over Jay Z. You gotta day. understand the impact Jay Z has on the country. I'm not talking not about over impact. Nas. I'm talking about. I mean, rap. it's over Nas. Just literal rap. Rap. Jay Z can rap. So can Nas. Bro, it's not even 
I'd put I put Nas I put Big L over fucking Jay Z. Bro, these guys don't have a long enough career to say that. Because Big L got shot. No, what I'm saying is Jay Z <laughs> is fuck? the greatest because you can see from now, from then to now, that he consistently bombs. If you cannot do that, you can't name the guy that put out one album and say he's like, that's my bigger like I love Biggie. Biggie came out with the flow. I'm only giving Biggie and Tupac the credit. But everybody after that has to have extensive long career in hip hop to say that these guys are great. Biggie created a style. Greg, Biggie gives a sound that you Biggie's never heard. Top. And if Number it wasn't one. for if it wasn't for Go. Diddy sampling all these old school songs and bringing it with Big, Biggie's raps, we wouldn't have Biggie reference track for Little Kim. So what I'm saying is, if you guys are saying these guys aren't writing their raps, can we compare them to Biggie? Can we compare the guy that's sitting in that room? I watched. J. But, Cole's documentary when he was out in, in Jamaica and right, he carries on, oh, wait 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 no, but look, wait bro, wait I'm wanna... saying something oh, J. Cole God. carries a little a little book I don't know if he does it now but he carries a little book and everything he sees he makes little verses he jots it down that's a creator that loves his craft that's what I'm trying to tell y'all I can't just say it's okay and everybody does that because everybody's not doing that but, but if people are doing that, can we put them in the list of greatest rappers? I See, that's the thing. If you go I, get the greatest writers, you're not the greatest rapper. But that's what I'm talking you're the about greatest right creator. now. I feel like rap has become a smoke and mirror type of show where there's all these no. people. No. Yes, bro. These new guys, not these, Jones, not these guys who have been on, doing bro. it, bro. Come on, bro. You these people behind future? the scenes, there's people writing you for people, All I'm bro. saying is, it's context to this shit, bro. Like, I'm, like, you go on the Black Album, the credits, bro, and, like, go, I'm just letting you look at it yourself. Go to, it's songwriters on every fucking song, bro. That shit ain't there for nothing, bro. Like, you gotta, like, speak They played that, a part. They wrote some shit. <clears throat> bro, okay, we said, we looking at, we looking at, we looking at, okay. We need some new goals and some shit. We looking at okay. It's always songwriters. It looks like it's on here, right? K. West, Sean Carter. But my thing is this though: you gotta, you gotta. I'm looking at a lot of stuff on here. Ninety nine problems. A lot of the biggest hits. But what you gotta understand is, bro. A lot of these guys are not just rapping for them. They're writing hooks. They're writing concepts, and they have to be legally. They have to be written down that they had. We're in the process. You know how far that goes? If you were in the studio and you were writing a song and I came in there and said, yo, change the last verse, the last two bars and switch it around. You should put this. I have to be written down as writing credit. Bro, all I'm saying is that it's people nah, that man. have written shit. With You've him, lost shit. Y'all, you guys are off your rocker. You guys are seriously off your rocker. No one writes for Jay-Z. Give me a reference track and I'll stop saying that. But until that day comes, if there's no reference track, what are we talking about at this point? I mean, we can't convince you. <laughs> no, because we, we can't. Because guess what? You. you guys don't have a reference track. Why would we have a reference track? You have one on a lot of people. Who? who? I, why would I have one? Lil Kim. I don't have a reference track. Drake. I don't have one. What do you mean? It's a lot. Of, but I'm saying that there's a lot of reference tracks. Where are they at? <laughs> what? Like, yeah, what so reference like, tracks you reference? Like, why do you think we're supposed to just so have why them handily I'm available? Is, why do you think we're, we're supposed to have them handily available? Until a reference track come out, I'm not taking that from them. Oh my god! And once right. again, if you are getting help on your verses, there's nothing wrong with that. If you're in that creative process, I'm a director of a music video. Some things artists want in their music video, but when you watch the music video, I say directed by Quadir. So everything in there is not always me. We understand that. But what I'm saying, if I write a movie from script to production to everything and I want it a certain way, I did that, right? So what I'm saying is you can't always say that these guys are the best if they're not doing all the hard work. And like I said, Drake is someone that we know outside of that is a great fucking artist. We're not, we're not taking anything from him. But we're not going to say the GOAT, Jay-Z. I'm not taking nothing from Jay-Z. You are taking something from Nobody's him. Nobody's taking not, nothing from Jay-Z. Because y'all see writing. He's one of the most prolific. He's one of the most prolific rappers, businessmen to ever touch the industry, bro. I said he's still the GOAT. We ain't talking about business. We talk about artists. I never said he wasn't the GOAT. He's still the GOAT. But yeah, he's, everybody, he's one everybody, of the greatest every, to do it. Nobody's self-made. Like, everybody had help, bro. 
Right. Everybody had hope. Right. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. People are getting their shit written. Not Jay Z. Look, okay, so this is the blueprint. You can look at the writing. Bro, I don't care about the writing credit because it doesn't tell you what they did. Okay. So then anybody who has writing credit on anything doesn't mean shit? Yes, it doesn't mean shit. You get a award, but we don't know what you writ, though. When we're talking about writing, we got to know what you writ, though. But like he said, there's fucking clauses in contracts where you're not allowed to disclose this shit. Yep. Everybody don't get credit. No, they don't. Yeah, I they can show you some. If you fucking sign your eligibility to get credit, to wipe your credit off the fucking thing, you nobody has to get credit. They can pay you out of that. Credit, no, they can pay you out of that. You bugging, shawty. Legally, you have to have credit. Legally. They can pay. If, if if it's in the contract, all right, here, you get this amount of money, you write this, 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 and this, and, and then you don't get fucking of. credit. That is that that's happened. That uh, happens. I don't know. Why do you think Jay Z got all them writers that's saying that he's written on it? He don't give a fuck. Yes, he does. He nothing to care about. He calls Everybody himself the rest rapper. Everybody fucking does it, bro. It's the industry. They try to say, um Everybody gets songs. They try to say, um Pharrell has written shit for Hove. Nigga, everybody does it. Like Pharrell do ain't nowhere near Hoof. I don't believe that. Oh my God. Bro, songs, bro. Are you fucking hot? That's pro- the Pharrell point of being an artist, bro. Him. Shut up. Just shut up. Bro. Oh, just we all up. fool. You just said we'll the be right music back. Don't we'll fit. be right back. That don't even make sense. Yeah, we need more.